Hi, my name is Jinri Kim, and today uh, we're presenting our work called CGRC, which is Content-Based Graphic Construction for Cold Start Item Recommendations. So first, I'll start with the motivation. So collaborative filtering is a leading recommendation method excelling at capturing user preference through the viewing history. And what I mean by this is uh, if the video in the middle is watched by both user, uh, the users are considered as a similar user. And if the first video is watched by her but not watched by him, the, the first video is also likely to be recommended to him. And recently, collaborative filtering has developed with Graph Journal Network, which is the most explicit way to represent co-occurrence collaborative signals and captures the user taste. Uh, by using a um, high-order graph structure, it uses multi-hop neighbor information. And what I mean by this is if the video on the right, I mean, video on the right can be recommended to the multi-hop users. So for, for example, like two, three or more hop users. Um, however, there's a limitation exists for collaborative filtering. If new items uh, without any interaction comes into a system, because they do not have any historical data, they do not have any connected edges. Therefore, they are impossible to recommend. And this is so-called cluster problem. Um, which is difficulty in recommending new items to cold items with no historical data. And this problem is critical in real life because for example, in YouTube, more than 500 hours of video being uploaded each minute. Then how to recommend new items without historical data? Uh, by using items content. So content-based model use fluence item content such as video, audio, or text to generate content feature. Um, then diverse CF mapping methods have been proposed to transfer the content feature to recommendation suitable feature. And using an inner product, we can produce the recommendation score. And I'll talk about the diverse CF mapping method in the next few slides. So I'll talk about the various CF mapping methods and their limitations. So previous CF mapping methods include MLP method or generated methods such as scan or autoencoder. Um, however, these methods are unable to capture uh, high order collaborative signals in item features beyond direct consumptions. And what I mean by this is these methods do not use neighborhood information and only rely on the direct consumption. Therefore, recently there have been attempts to use the graph neural network on item item attribute graph to utilize the high order collaborative signals. Um, however, these methods are unable to capture uh, the dynamics of the user item interactions because it uses content based high order signals, not the interaction based high order signals. Um, therefore, the recommendation rely on assumption that if items share the similar attribute, the user will have preference on that item. And this means it cannot capture the user's fine grained taste. Uh, to, so to tackle the previous problem, first we wanna use the high order collaborative signals and use a graph neural network on user item bipartite graph, not on item item attribute graph. Um, however, cold item does not have any address. Therefore, we propose the model called CDRC that use multimodal context information and grab mask to encoder structure to reconstruct the user item interactions to capture the user detail taste. And I'll talk about our model CDRC in detail. This is the overall model architecture, and it consists of three parts. So first, the user and item modalities goes as an input and fit into the encoding layer. Then using uh, the user and item node representation, we'll generate the user item by per type graph G. Then we'll make certain items as a cold items and mask all the associated edges to, ma um, to make mask graph G prime. Then using our novel approach, we will reconstruct the edges to generate reconstructed graph called GREC. 
And this will be fed into GN and encoder and perform recommendation. And I'll talk about the detail in, in each steps. So first step is the user and item encoding layer. For user, the user ID will go through embedding layer to produce user embedding. Then item multimodal raw features will go through modality specific encoder uh, to produce each feature embedding. Then to produce the final item embedding, we concatenate it and process through MLP layer. In this part, we train using modality alignment laws, which is contrastive laws to learn multimodal relationship through self-supervision. And these laws make modality embedding of the same item to be close to each other. And next, I'll talk in detail about graphic construction part. Uh, by using a user and item node embedding produced from previous part, we make user item by prototype graph. Then we label certain item as a code item and mask all the associative edges. And this process is to mimic the test phase where the code item do not have any connected edges. Then it processes through GN and encoder and edge decoder to get the edge probability. And I'll talk about the GN and encoder and edge decoder in detail in the next slides. Then we'll reconstruct the edge and generate the reconstructed graph, GREG. And this part, reconstruction loss is used to train, which tries to make uh, GREG to be similar to G. So I'll talk about the GNN encoder in detail. Um, GNN encoder update no representation using both its own and neighbor nodes. And for user, we process through multi-layer GCN to get the diverse user preference. Then the user uh, representations from each layer will be uh, aggregated using aggregation layer to produce final user embedding. Um, however, to handle the cold items, the final item embedding is itself. Uh, then we perform edge decoder to calculate the probability of edges between user and item. Um, using user embedding and item embedding from previous part, uh, we concatenated and perform MLP to get the edge probability. And we connect the top K high probability user item relationship to generate the constructed graph GREG. And lastly, we perform recommendation using item and user embedding obtained through the GNN encoder. And by using a reconstructed graph GREG, this will go into the GCN layer again to produce user and item embedding. And the reason why we use GCN layer again is that we want the cold item information to be flow to the neighbor embedding and vice versa to enhance the recommendation performance. And this part, we use a recommendation loss, which is contrastive loss to maximize the dot product between the same pair and minimize for a different pair. So to sum up the loss in the architecture, we have three parts and each loss is produced in each part. Then total loss is summing up all the loss with the weight. And next I'll talk about the experiments. So for data set, we use real world video data set, which is TikTok, Movie Lens, One Million, and Yahoo Movie. And for content feature, we use video, audio, and text. And for modality specific encoder, we use BIT for video and AST for audio and BERT for text. And the detailed data statistic of the data set is shown below in table one. And we split the data based on items in a ratio of 70 to 15 to 15. And for evaluation protocol, we use recall AK, precision K, and the CGIK. So there are four research questions we want to ask and answer. And the first question is, um, how does CGRC perform compared to the state-of-the-art cold start item recommendation models? And we also want to see the different, um, how different components contribute to the performance of CGRC. And also, we want to see the effect of the hyperparameters. And lastly, we want to see the 
how can the superiority of the CGRC model be demonstrated through qualitative case studies? Um, so this is the overall performance comparison. And as you see the table two, our model CGRC consistently outperformed the baseline methods. And this is the evaluation of that modalities and aggregation methods. And if you see the if you see in the left, you can see that using all three modality have the most impact on recommendations. And we also want to see how the different design choices within the mass graph autoencoder framework affect on recommendations. And we can see that um, using mean for user aggregation and concatenation method for edge aggregation shows the best result. And we also want to see the effect of the mass graph autoencoder structure. So what I mean by there is graph encoder, it means we utilize the GCM produced user embedding to encode a mass graph G prime. And if there's no graph encoder, it means we utilize user embedding without pro uh, processing it through GCM. And uh, what it means by there is MLP decoder is we utilize the MLP layer to calculate the edge probability. And if there's no MLP decoder, it means we utilize inner product to calculate the edge probability without passing through MLP layer. And if you see the result on the left, uh, you can see that using graph encoder and using MLP decoder uh, shows the best result. And we also want to see the effect of the prediction method and reconstructed graph. And in here, without GCM means we utilize the link prediction result for our recommendations. And the other method means we apply GCM encoder to the reconstructed graph with different layers of GCM. And if you see the figure one, uh, you can see uh, using two layer or three layers uh, shows the best result. And this is the effect of the hyperparameters. And I tested on the five key hyperparameters, which is embedding dimensional EDD, masking ratio, the weight factor for multimodal alignment loss, the weight factor for reconstruction loss, and the top K value for edge connection. And the, de the detailed test result is shown below. And lastly, we perform qualitative analysis. So for example, by looking at the user history, we can know that user 3315 prefers Steven Spielberg films, such as E.T., Jurassic Park, Jaws, and so on. And our model also recommends the Steven Spielberg film, Saving Private Ryan. And this cannot be recommended using only content features because Saving Private Ryan is totally different content. But because our model can capture the detailed preference, it can recommend the content-wise different movies. And we can see a similar thing uh, happens for user 784. And this last page is, this is our takeaway message of the presentations. So our model CGRC uses multimodal contents information and grab mask autoencoder structure to reconstruct the user item interactions. Um, to capture the user detailed taste, and it effectively recommends cold stirred items. Uh, this is the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening.